Fans, yet another episode of Extreme Memories. Of course, not too long ago, we passed the two-year mark. And we want to take this moment once again to thank everybody that has subscribed to the Wrestling Chatter YouTube channel. Once again, like, share, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, the notification button. New episodes of Extreme Memories on the 15th and the 30th of every month. Everything XPW. Everything you got that right, everything. We're gonna go back in time, back to the training center. That's right, another Asylum alumni right here on Extreme Memories. His name is Super Gabacho. But we're gonna go back to the roots, the Gabacho roots. And it all started at the Asylum with guys like Dynamite D and the list goes on. It is a very, interesting episode from a guy that's done it all since starting in XPW at the Asylum, and he's got some very interesting stories that are pretty extreme. This is Extreme Memories! Well, we are here, and once again, Super Gabacho, welcome to Extreme Memories Everything XPW. All right, thank you, man. Thank you, Chris. Oh, yeah, no problem, man. Um, and I want very interesting talking to you because you're you're a guy that obviously made a name for himself uh, in this region of the country in professional wrestling, and um, and you've done a lot. Uh, but it all started at a certain place that a lot of our fans here of the show are familiar with, uh, the Asylum, which was the XPW <laughs> Pro Wrestling Training School uh, that opened shortly after the inception of the league, and. Uh, so yeah, you were one of the students. Uh, you were one of the guys years and years ago, as all of us were years ago over there. And um, and we'll talk about that. We'll talk about uh, when you kind of debuted, which was after XPW. And uh, and of course, what you've done since and what you're doing now. But uh, Super Gabacho, once again, welcome to Extreme Memories. And uh, fans, thank you again for joining us on the 15th and the 30th of every month right here exclusively subscribe to the wrestling chatter channel if you like what you see like share comment subscribe hit that bell notification button and here we go so uh gabacho super if you will uh what is um where were you from originally you mean as far as where, what do you mean where was i from like where was i born or where where, where did i started yeah, yeah, you raised where were you born and raised back east back east man i, I was born in washington dc um grew up in the virginia maryland area uh graduated high school in virginia and then that's when my mom decided to uh, move us kids all, all four kids out to california wow. and uh, what i'm sorry what age was that that you moved out i graduated high school so okay. i was 18, 18 is when i came out here Okay, and then so when when did you when did you get the bug? When did you uh, know that uh, you wanted to be a part of pro wrestling? Well, I you know I watched it on TV a lot and followed it, and then one when I decided to go to a show, a local show, um, I forget when it was. It wasn't until um, probably late nineteen ninety five to two thousand somewhere in there, and I went to a local show. It was I like, in the valley somewhere? I, I know it was like or Super Dragon, and it was like, he was messing with the crowd. I'm so intimate, I've never been to an intimate show. I'm like, God, I can do this stuff. I can do this. I can do this, because I, you know, I um, I was di I was a diver. I played lacrosse. I did a lot of, you know, a lot of sports. I felt I was pretty athletic, and I'm like, I can do this. I was 35 at the time. I'm like, you know, if I don't try this, I'm always going to wonder, you know, what if, what if, and then after that show, I researched online for wrestling schools near me, and xpw came up you know on the online yeah so we're talking about 99 2000 yes yeah yeah so, so so you were 35 in 1995 hey hey, hey. <laughs> we'll edit that out but yeah i'm i'm 55 years old now man i just turned 55 well, hey, in june you're you said it not me you said it <laughs> <laughs> i guess it. what are you getting mad at me for man um, uh, now, you, you did the math. You did the math. <laughs> well, I think our fans, our fans know arithmetic too. I, I have confidence. In that. But, 
But um, okay, so interesting, man. So did you were you like yeah. a big WWF? Were you a big WWF WCW fan before that indie stuff? Uh, when growing yeah, up, yeah, yeah. I mean, when the war was going on, the WWE. Well, actually, I started. Yeah, you know, I mean, I watched it way back when Macho Man and you know Jake the Snake, Honky Tonk Man. You know, I watched it. You know, for for a good part of my life, I followed it. You know, I don't follow it anymore, but, you know, but you know, I, I did follow it for quite some time. Okay. So, okay, so that that's interesting. And then, so, sh- well, you're out in L.A., obviously. You graduated high school. And then, and then the wrestling thing just came around. You saw an uh, indie show. Yeah. Like you said, quite, quite intimate. And it is. It's a quite different experience. Yet, yeah. they're treating it. I remember, like, when I first discovered that world of, of indie, indie wrestling, um, and it was like, wow, you know, this is so intimate, yet they're still treating this like it's a big professional wrestling, uh, like monstrous event that the WWF does. That was so cool, you know. Um, but uh, OK, so so we're fast forwarding then a little bit, like you said, now you want to you realize you can do this and, and you're 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 at the age now where it's a good time to get into this and you do it. And that was you're right, like. Um, as far as television goes, XBW was when it first came on air, there was not too much stuff on TV for pro wrestling. You know, there was ECW, there was WWF and WCW. And then so if you got on TV wrestling, it was it was when we talked about this on the show where just being on television in general was a bigger deal than because you didn't have the Internet, YouTube and all that. Right. It was just. I mean, almost can't, can't explain it now because of the way it it is now you know um but but it was a much bigger deal so here you have this commercial because i remember our our shows weekly shows on saturday nights would have that hey join the asylum if you want to be a student da 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 and so that was heavily advertised and uh and so if you were not really in the indie world and you're just the casual fan like we all were Um, that's what you're going to see. And that was really the only thing that was advertised, at least in Southern California, advertised on television, um, on regular TV for pro wrestling training school. It was part of our show, our commercial, but it was still on TV. So you and I love that show. show. (laughs) I got a a story about that. We can get to about the show where I, I I was in school and I, anyway, we'll we'll get to that. I'll talk about my, uh, yeah. But I, okay, yeah. so I was, okay. a, I was, a, um, I joined and right. And I, I was like 250. I don't think it was 250 a month, 500 a month, something like that. But anyway, I was, um, you know, Dynamite D trained with him. And there was a, um, there was a, um, a training we were doing where, uh, we jump over the, we hold the top of the ropes, you springboard from out of the apron into over the ropes and, and back and forth, back and forth. I like this easy. I was doing it with ease, jumping over. And one time I let go of the top rope before uh, my feet cleared, hit the top rope to the header. There's my AC separation. I still got uh, number two AC separation, mess my neck up. But anyway, that night, well, first they bring me into the, uh, I was kind of going into shock and stuff like that. So they brought me into the, uh, uh, into the office area. And of course, uh, XBW, they also um, did um, some adult films. So yeah. They were they were editing all those in that room I was sitting in. So I was like, "What the hell's going on in here?" Anyway, that was this yeah. night. The, the the students were going to be on TV. Where Supreme, all the students, Supreme, Supreme broke into the office and just whooped everybody's butt. I could have been that's why I could have been on TV, but I got hurt and I had to go home. So oh. I kind of blew my my TV debut would have been there because uh, the, the uh, stepfather was on there, Chino was on there. It was that my all our group was on there except me because that was the night I got I showed off and got hurt. So do that's you remember, my. Do you remember what year that was? Because well, well, not what year, but do you remember what office was that? The one in Van Nuys or North Hollywood by the airport? North Hollywood. North Hollywood. Okay, yeah, that was the one where where yeah he he broke in because he did the break yeah. in twice. One was in the first office, and the second one. Okay, I know exactly which one you're talking about. Wow, dude, I didn't know. This is news to me. I mean, maybe, maybe somebody mentioned it years ago when it happened, but I, but I never heard it since then. If that's when I heard it, but I don't think I heard that until now. So that's interesting. Yeah. Man. That's but why I had long, again, I had long hair. Then. 
Yeah, I, I remember that. I remember you had long hair. And, and I remember, um, oh, yeah, it's coming back to me now. Like somebody got injured and we were, it was confusion. You mean because Supreme? No, it was before Supreme really injured the guys. Yeah, That's yeah, the guy yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, so that was you. That's all right. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Um, and then well, I did Ring Crew for I did Ring Crew as well. And uh, I remember we do like the rodeo. I was like some somewhere we went where it was like a dirt infield or something like that. I forget what what, what venue that was, but was it was like me. Era. It was me, Eddie, you know, Eddie, Robbie, Eddie, you know, it was Carnage, Robbie, and there was a bunch of us uh, doing Ring Crew, I did Ring Crew a lot, and uh, oh, yeah. but uh, yeah. I eventually got my I, I, my first uh, shot was I mean because uh, it was ring crew and then uh I forget I think it was my first shot was went up north somewhere it was me and sexy Chino against Robbie and Carnage in a match and and my first uh, I think my name was J P Skills but uh they told me that I was I is when your first match you just want to go 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 so Carnage like hey just calm down relax just relax so but it's just been a long. I've learned so much and did so much, man. But that's just want to say that's my first, that was my first match. I still remember that. Oh, that's awesome, man. Well, shout out to those guys as well. Um, yeah. And uh, so, okay, so we're talking like, yeah, you're talking the Pico Rivera Sports Arena with the with the bull ring there. Yeah, I absolutely mm -hmm. remember that. Um, but, uh, okay, so um, when when you were, you, you got, you missed that opportunity on XPW TV with Supreme that a lot of people talk about that are XPW <laughs> fans. Oh yeah, I remember that. And because he was stiff, so you might have actually saved yourself from getting even more, <laughs> more in here. Because <laughs> yeah, he he uh, yeah, paying your dues for sure with him, man. But uh, um, so I'm I'm thinking circa t 2001 or two, right there. And um, yeah. And um, so now when when you were. Did you last in the asylum all the way up until XPW's end, or did you leave before the league had ended? I think I left before that because there was um, – I'm not sure if I came back. I started training elsewhere after I – because I, I was uh, – it took me a while to, to recover from that. So I think uh, – no, I must have come back for a while because I remember training with um, with uh, Joey. So I think it was after. So I think I trained there for a little bit longer. I don't think it was to the very end though, because then I went to to um, City of Industry AWS and trained there. I was a long, long haul, two days a week, Tuesday and Thursdays was fun. Wild child. Yep. I remember that. I remember you being out there uh, in those shows and all that. Uh, shortly after, right at the end of XPW, and then after XPW ended, um, were you? Did you? Um, any crazy stories other than that one that you could talk about? Because you were there, like me. I mean, I've shared a lot of the stories, and a lot of the guys have. But you were one of those few guys uh, that exist that were in that crazy extreme world. And, uh, you know, yeah, it was a wrestling training center. Yeah, it was. And it was, legitimately. But yeah. it was a wrestling training center sharing the space with the adult film industry at the time. You know, a big part yeah. of the adult just, uh, well, uh, I can tell you uh, a, a little story, but um, I guess uh, I'm trying to make a PG, but because uh, uh, what would happen if you did like when you were you do some cardio, you're running around the ring and they'd say, hey, uh, you know, if you whoever, uh, you know, stops first or whatever, you're going to make you're going to make you all watch uh, Cock Smokers 2 in the middle, you know, like some, some they threaten us with watching uh, gay porn or something like that, you know, like. But it never yeah. happened. But I mean, it was it was a threat, you know. <laughs> but, uh, so, so it, and then I heard you could cross over. I never crossed over though. I thought about it and do both, but I just, oh. I just, uh, I, I, I don't think I, I didn't want to. I don't think. I mean, now I probably don't care. I could, but uh, you know, back then I was like, ah, I don't think so. No, I don't think it. Not. There were offers for a lot of us to cross over, but most of us. There's also also offers to get paid and and pick up paid in porn. You could, some people did that too, but I wasn't at that you point know, in getting was, paid. Yet. Look, and, and look, <laughs> I, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Look, the whole thing was very tempting. We're we're a bunch of young guys. They're offering you pay. They're offering you to be with beautiful women, and and we're young guys. So of course there was temptation, but I think. Most of us, I mean, almost, 
pretty yeah. much everybody pretty much everybody made the wise decision yeah to, but the thing is when you it's funny when i you know sometimes i do watch porn but then you see they're doing this that, that's the ring we trained in that's the you know it's like that's the, well, <laughs> that's like right in the right in the areas like we were trained oh my I got, god I got, I got one i got one even better um okay oh. yes none of us most <laughs> none of us none of us uh performed right but we're still young guys so at the time we got free free videos right and and okay whatever and uh before before the internet and so um i remember watching one and you know guy and a girl doing their thing and and they're in one of the offices and and you can hear the training the body <laughs> slam <laughs> oh my god oh yeah i was like oh that's awesome man <laughs> And then, but you know, know I, I've been training before and just have them walk by out with topless or something. Oh, what the heck is that? And you know, so it's like, because the, yeah, the, it was, the, it was, uh, the it was, set was right next to the ring, the bed's bedroom yeah, set. It, oh, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was, def, I mean, no, no, not going to sugarcoat it. It was hedonism, you know, but at the same time, it was, it was, look, it was at the end of the day, we were there. We had, we had to do our job and they had to do yeah. their job. And, um, and I mean, it I had no problems with anything. I'm sorry? I had no problem with anything. Everything was, you know, it was all cool. Yeah. Except for later on when I saw, like, in the ring, what, did they wash? Did they sanitize? <laughs> they spray that down at all? I, mean, I hope so. <laughs> um, yeah, there's some funny, yeah, there's some crazy moments. Like, I remember um, there was, like, an eight, you know, in the early, late 90s early 2000s it was different with hiv right and aids and i remember they were getting ready for training and damien Steele. everyone's looking at the ring because there was like uh stuff in there and and, uh, <laughs> and blood but we didn't we weren't sure where and from but there was stuff and damien Steele told the students all right it's already dry that means it's all whatever there's diseases it all dried out and decayed so we can go in like okay okay dr Steele, like you know exactly like <laughs> molecules are dried out but uh but no that was that was it was it was a crazy world you were part of it you saw it um and and yeah it was it was uh boy uh, you grow up quick man being around there but uh um so um, how was your, how was your, um, dealings with, um, your tr main trainer was dynamite D you said? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, one of the greats, late, great dynamite D, um, boy, gone way too soon. What a, what a talent, man. And, um, and, yeah. uh, and so, and, and one of the great guys too, the nicest guys, we've talked about this, one of the nicest guys, but, uh, and, and, but he wouldn't, he would, he would toughen you up in, in school right he wouldn't pull any punches at the same time i mean genuine nice guy but he took his craft seriously correct it's true it's true yeah and and would you say you learned the most from him at, at first well i don't yeah i mean I, the, the basics but then um I, you know, when I, I, at the AWS, I went there because I, I, I believe, I don't know if I only, I didn't even do a year. I don't, I don't think at, um, at XBW training, I don't think it was quite a year. So, um, but anyway, um, I learned a little bit more because it was a bigger class over at, uh, with Ron and them and it was just drills and stuff like that. But so I think I learned, and then also I trained, uh, with Andre too, uh, um, his, he had a federation and I actually, actually used to help out the training too. Um, but Andre's like a big time lawyer now in Mexico now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, um, I learned a lot. I love the basics for sure. You know, the basics, uh, you know, but then a little, you know, I, started, I started wrestling and then I went to AWS after I started wrestling. Cause after I'd, I got a couple of shots there, I mean, I lived in Ventura and it wasn't too many, you know, schools in the Ventura area. They're, right. they're all out in LA. Yeah. So yeah. I'm sorry. Say again. No, I was just gonna say I did. Um, I did. I I didn't. I don't think I had a lot of training. I I think I, I wrestled a lot more. I just got hands-on training. So I went to. I ended up going to WPW, like you know, wrestling there every week for a while. But uh, I did do City of the Industry for a while. But but then I started getting booked, and uh, so um, 
I forget, but I did get. I I wish I you know I was closer somewhere and got more training, but there's nothing like in the ring training, you know. Yeah. What it is. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Um. So how was your um, how was your relationship dealings with uh, some of the higher ups like Kevin Kleinrock, Rob Black, or did you have any dealings with Lizzie? Or never. No, none at all. None at all. Basically. Uh, yeah. Uh. I, I never had it because I wasn't uh, really a, a, t a talent yet. I was just still ring crew. So it right. wasn't, you know, it was handed, any information was handed down to me. So, gotcha. Yeah. That's usually how it worked. And uh, we're, we're, so you were there right toward the end. Unfortunately, when the league folded uh, before it came back and all that now. But uh, what, yeah. what was your, was there any, um, before your departure and the league's fold? Was there any at least plan to say like, hey, uh, we're thinking of doing this character. We're thinking of doing this angle. And this is what we think we want for you. Were you in line for that yet? Or were there too many other guys with seniority in the class? There was other guys with senior seniority in the class. Um, and um, but I started wrestling uh, Chino kind of and Eddie, all them. We they got me. Uh, it kind of got me started uh, with the, with the character. Uh, you know, I kind of. First, like JP Skills, I watched uh, AJ Styles, so I kind of took AJ Styles, JP Skills, but uh, from there they told me to go to WPW. But no, there was nothing lined up for me at all. I mean, they, they, um, I think that, and if it would have went longer, yeah, because I think uh, uh, people could see, you could see talent or you know charisma, or you can see, and I, I did, I think I do have something, of course, or I wouldn't be uh, still doing it. I guess the promoters still call me, so. But uh, yeah. Yeah, nothing in line nothing lined up though. But okay, yeah, um, yeah. So you got your basics, and and unfortunately the doors closed. Uh, hit uh, yeah. hit pretty much everybody by surprise. Even though there were a lot of weird things going on at that time with Rob and the federal government, it still was a little bit of a yeah. shock that when it closed, it closed because. Yeah. You know, it was a pretty powerful company as far as its parent yeah. company having all that money and all that. So, um, but um, okay, so you're 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 branched off now, and um, talk a little bit about uh, you know this is everything XPW, but you you know you came out of the ashes of the asylum, man. So, out of the ashes yeah. of the asylum was born, as the fans can see right here, Super Garbacho. What is that? But I, I, I what? Well, talk about the Genesis and 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 that that character that we know. Okay. Super well, first I started off with JP Skills, and then um I changed it up and went to the that's when I went to Two Fly White Guy, I want to be rapper. I wore the bling bling, the dickies, and all that. So I was a comedy heel, you know. And I did that I for a while. That. I went to NTW. I got I got work there. I did WPW. Did that character there. So I did that character. But then um, who was it? Uh. Jerry, uh, Jerry, uh, what's his name uh, over at WPW? Um, and for and for now, he um came up with he goes, hey, we should make you an outfit, and you should be like super gringo or super gabacho. I'm like, make the make the outfit. I'll do the character, right? So, so they they made me an outfit, and here's how I debuted. I was uh, I had the uh, street clothes, street clothes on. I had a uh, uh, the outfit underneath, and I was a fan ringside, and um, it was Marcus. Marcus, uh, and uh, there was Jarrell, and uh, I forget who else it was. But anyway, they came outside, and then they, they won. They cheated or something like that. They did something and cheated in the match. And I was like, hey, you know, you're yelling at me. You cheated. You cheated. And then they, they popped me. Boom. I'm like, oh. okay, so then I, go, then I just I jumped over the rail. I went. There's a porta potty. I would go to the porta potty. I'm like, ah, ah. And I came out with the super gabacha thing, clamped top rope to plunge off, got them all. And that's how. <laughs> That's how super <laughs> Gabacho they do. Oh, but uh, from, awesome. there, from there, and from there, everybody they love the super Gabacho. And I didn't do JP skills that much, but everyone wanted the super Gabacho. So you know, that's pretty much. I, I went back like me a couple times. I did a uh, J um, Two Fly White Guy, but I mean, it pretty much has all been super Gabacho. Oh, so, I remember. Uh, I remember Two Fly White Guy. That was that was. Yeah, I love doing that character. Yeah, that's good stuff, dude. Um, what? <laughs> So, so talk about some of your, um, 
most memorable matches, your your biggest opponents and all that? Oh my gosh, just I mean, I mean, I mean, because I the, people would ask me uh, who do you want, and I, I always wrestled anybody. I didn't care who it was. I wasn't picky. I didn't say no. I didn't want to wrestle this guy, so I wrestled anybody. I didn't care. You know, I'll, I'll figure it out. So, I mean, there's so many times I me mean, because I wrestled a lot of lucha shows and. Here's your opponent. They'll speak English. Ah, great. So, <laughs> you know, and there's someone translating what's going to happen. And it, sometimes it never happens like that. So but one memorable thing, um, uh, uh, Ray Mysterio's uncle came up with his crew. Uh, this was working for, uh, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Punisher's, Punisher, Punisher's uh, Federation. And um, translated, it was a big dude. Yeah, probably 6'3", 2 220, 230, and all of a sudden, as he's doing his own thing, boom, light me up, light me up. I'm like, what the? So I went outside the ring. I grabbed a chair. I'm like, dude, you better calm down. And and um, and then, but dude, I got back in the ring. I reached back him as hard as I could right in the head. Pow! And he's like, ha, 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 ha. I'm like, oh, I'm dead. But uh, no, nah, they just they tell you. I think they, they, they I went to the uh, back of the, after the match was over. He's like, they just wanted to test you. I'm like, well, okay, whatever. So, but I went toe to toe with them. But I hate when that happens, man. When it goes one way, and then they start doing their own thing, especially if there's guys bigger than you. You know, sometimes you gotta you gotta stiff them right back and get your own. And I don't know, but it did work out okay, I guess. But they offered me to go down there and uh and train, which I, in hindsight I probably should have trained down in San Diego with them and their crew. But I was working at a mor I got a mortgage business at the time, and they gave me their information, and I just I just didn't pull the trigger, man. I got you, man. You, you, you've done quite a bit, um, again, in this region. And, uh, again, you're, you're not alone because, um, a lot of, uh, there are a lot of guys that we've even had on the show already that came out of the asylum. So, and you mentioned a few of them. So shout out once again, if I'm, if I don't drop your guys' names, you know, you know, I know all you guys, so I'm thinking of all you, but, uh, no, that's very cool, man. And, um, well, Super Gabacho, uh, before we go, um, once first off, thank you, man, for joining. It's been great. And and uh, let me ask you this. Uh, what were, well, first off, what were your th what were your thoughts on Rob Black? You said you didn't really deal with him much, but do you have any? Um, did you did you like uh, notice him? It, whether you had a conversation one on one, what you've noticed about him, and what were your thoughts then? Now, well. Um... I never actually had a conversation with him. Maybe he passed by, but I never spoke to him at all. Only thing I know him from is from the TV shows and what uh, you know if people have said about him. But it seems like he's a you know good businessman. It seems like he's a good guy to me. I mean, I've never heard anything really negative about him. Um, just business, man. You know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But I've, I've never heard anything negative. But maybe I just not talking to the right people. But. <laughs> Like a so, good businessman. So, so someone that's someone that had been there, someone that had trained, someone that had um, that has ties to XPW in a big way, um, fr from the foundational aspect, and um, and that's gone on since then, uh, and as a fan, uh, what in your mind, how do you see the legacy? What is the legacy in your mind of XPW? I think it was rising up, man. And they had, they had, um, the TV show was, I like the TV show. I thought it was, they were, they were competing. I mean, I think it was just, like you said, it was just easy. It was an ECW, WWF. And, and when that time WCW was, I don't was out, but they, I think they were, to me, it seemed like a strong company. I mean, they were building momentum and they got big names to, to, to come out and like you knew how to promote, but it just didn't go and go, go that way, you know? So that's, that's my feeling. Okay. Yeah. A lot, a lot of people share that sentiment. It's like it. Production it, it, was good. It seemed like everything seemed good. They said, it seemed like yeah. they had it together. Absolutely. Um, and it's good, just, good commentators. Oh, thank you, man. I don't know. <laughs> You're great, man. I appreciate it. Well, dude, uh, 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 say, say what you want to the fans or any shout outs and where can we find you? Any plugs, anything on social media, etc. I don't do social media. I'm old school. I don't do social media anymore, man. So, uh, you gotta, you gotta know me or know somebody that knows me and gives me, give me a call. 805-200-9477. Give me a call. 
if you need oh, me. You go, or do you want me to wrestle for you? That's the first phone number we've had on this uh, show. So that's his story. Hey, that's, that's fine. That's that's, I don't school. do social media, man. I don't, don't do social media. I used yeah, to, that's... but not anymore. You're probably better off for it, man. Yeah. You're probably better off for it. People are addicted. I do, I do miss it. not seeing seeing what's going on in certain people's lives because I had a lot of wrestlers on uh, on Facebook and all that, but it just got too – likes and this and that i did just too i didn't want to do it anymore i i, I decided not to but i regret not being able to see what everyone's up to though that's all i know? completely i completely and i'm sure there's people out there that completely relate it's it's uh, overwhelming sometimes for sure man um well um any shout outs to anybody before we go uh you know i could start but i mean it's everyone at wpw is good to me um, all the federations has been, been really good to me. So, I mean, if I start naming names, I know I'm going to, I'm going to forget somebody, but, uh, uh, Albert and Rudy, I miss those two brothers, man. I, I Albert lived with me for a while, but just good memories with everybody in the ring in and out of the ring and then talking about everything. And just back then when I was wrestling and doing it and travel around, you know, I didn't realize like those were going to be some of my best memories of my life. You know, now looking back, it's like, God, that was you don't realize it till it's like at the time you don't think about that, but man, so many stories. That's a lot about wrestling. When you go to shows, it's about reminiscing and talking to people. You know, it's the whole. So when, you know, doing shows now, it's like it's a whole thing, man. It's not just wrestling; it's just the whole experience. Get your yeah. stuff ready, and then you know, I don't know. I can talk a little more, but that's I get goosebumps. I just talking about that stuff. So you know, reminiscing, yeah, seeing new old people, doing the doing the so thing, right. man. You're so right. That's what it's all about. <laughs> and that's what those are the things those are the things we look back on and, and Oh, I gotta say this though, but I'm you know, I've been wrestling since uh, I was thirty five, I'm fifty five now. So I go to shows now where the kid's grown up, he goes, uh, my, my it shows me a picture of how this little kid with me signing and he's like, You might use your his favorite wrestler now he's like all grown up and it's just so crazy to see people and tell and have him talk to him and say, yeah, my kids, I brought him to a show. When he got beat, he was crying, like, Dad, why? Why do they do that to me? And now he's bigger. It's just, it's yeah. just so great to see uh, people growing up and saying oh, I yeah. was one of their favorite wrestlers and stuff. It's like, oh, my God, you know. It's and he wanted me to sign a picture know. for him. Great stuff, man. Great stuff. Fans yeah. are good. I, I agree. And that and that is that's an honor and a privilege to for all of us to have worked in one fashion or the other in this business. And it's, and it's, uh, those are the moments you're right, man. Well, this is a great moment as well. Right now, brother, we're going to look back on this and this will be archived. And, uh, again, folks, this is extreme memories. This is super gabacho. One of the greats came out of the asylum, the official training center of XPW back in the day. And that's where it all started with him with some of the greats like dynamite D and all the rest of them. And uh, you know where to find him. Hey, give him a call. Literally. Give me a call. 805-200-9477. Let's talk. I'll take a couple. <laughs> All right, man. History was made here. First phone number given off on Extreme Memories. And it was given off you, by the one and only Super Gabacho. Super Gabacho, once again, thank you very much for joining us right here. And we will see you fans once again on the next episode of Extreme Memories. Thank you for watching Extreme Memories, hosted by Chris Kloss. He's dropping new episodes every month on the 15th and 30th. You can be the first to tune in by subscribing to the Wrestling Chatter channel right here on YouTube. See you next time.